Hey, Todd McFarlane, standing up at my new desk so I can draw while I'm standing up. Got my glasses on so I can be just like my hero, Stan Lee, like this. But more importantly, I had an infection in my eye. And if you see it, it's swollen, <coughs> right? So I just hide it. <coughs> I don't want to scare any of the children out there in internet world. So anyway, let's go and uh, look at what we're drawing here today. Um, which is relevant, I'll show you a bit later. This is a, sort of an homage cover of a Walking Dead, right? Let me show you what it looks like. There is a Walking Dead cover, and I'm going to do it, turn it into a Spawn cover. But that's not what we're here to discuss today. Uh, so let's go and show you what we're going to do. Uh, one of the questions I always get asked all the time is, how do you make your brushes? So let's show you how we actually do it. Um, there's a couple of simple simple controls you want to do. There's like three controls, right? So let's let's take it uh, and show you right here. You go over here. This is your brush control right here, or you can go to your brush right in here. But this is the one you want right here. So you hit this button right here, boom, and what happens is it now gives you all your different brushes that you have. And you can see here I've got like dozens and dozens and dozens of them. But don't don't get sort of scared of that. Here's all you need to do. This is where the magic comes, and this is where you can make a brush that is specific to you. Not for me, not for anybody else, but specific for you. So here's what you need to do. There's a couple places. Brian Haverland taught, taught me these tricks sort of years ago, and it's been a lifesaver. The spacing, usually when you just go in there normally, is way up here at 100, 200, 300, or whatever else you can see at 100. You can see it gets a little bit bouncy. This is what your brush is going to look like. Set and take this spacing and make it one. One percent. Always make it one percent. Right? Rule number one. Get the spacing to one. That's why we're going to make it rule number one. Then the other two things that you play with are these two right here. The angle, which is usually at 100 percent. And the roundness, which is usually at 100 percent. And lastly... You want to make sure that you have this clicked right here, the shape dynamic, because here's why. If you don't have the shape dynamic changed, watch what happens to your brush. I'm going to click the shape dynamic off. Can you see it? Look at, let's just go to the edge of the brush. So there it is when it's off, and there's the shape dynamic on. And what are you seeing? It automatically will give you a taper. If you don't have shape dynamics on, you're going to have a square edge, and you'll never be able to get a taper. So make sure that your shape dynamic is always clicked on. All the other ones, other than smoothing, you can have them all off. And then I'm left-handed. So I draw, as you can imagine, I come across the page this way, right? So as you can see, here's an arrow on this. When you have this set at 100, it's just a circle. Let's go and do it right here. So we'll go to uh, 100, and we'll go this to 100. Which is, which is what the default settings uh, of all these are. And as you can see, it's just basically a perfect circle. That means you're going to get a round, blunted brush. And if you don't have the shape dynamics on, you're going to get a square edge. So you're going to get a round brush and a square edge. You'll never be able to do anything sexy with it. So you want to make sure your shape dynamic is on. And then you want to tilt it. So I'm going to tilt it for a left-hander. I'm going to tilt it this way. If you're right-handed, you can play with it this way. So I'm going to go to my setting that I've learned, and this was just through trial and error. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to go to 130. And you can see now the arrow is at an angle because I'm a left-hander. I draw this way. And then I'm going to compress the round circle. I don't want it to be a round circle. I want it to be small. So I usually go anywhere between 70 and 100%. And if I go here, uh, it's 170%. I don't want it. I want, there we go right here. That's it. And see it's not a circle so if you just follow those simple rules shape dynamics spacing is one percent and then just play with the angle and the roundness you're going to find out that you're going to be able to do these cool brushes that will taper and that with your pressure you're going to go from thick to thin and you're going to be able to do almost anything else that you normally couldn't do so that's it i've known lots of people who have digital computers and they're not able to find the brush because they haven't played with these settings. Play with those settings and then tell me how it works out. I'd like to hear from you. Thanks. You guys be good. Peace.